Ah, happy to have him back on the show today. We got Brandon, who is busy on his phone. Please now, respect a bit when you have a VIP. <laughs> you don't scroll through Instagram. This, and, uh, I'm Please looking at my notes, notes, actually. Okay, okay, okay. Shh. There we go. has changed the last time it's been on the show but not our intro <laughs> it's still long it's still awkward and we still have to like you know refrain from making eye contact you know until the uh, intro is over that's we, why I'm looking at my phone so it's not awkward for our not, guests for you you know you just your shoes. Else. both shoes are like the same exactly color. this is called the uncle's shoes <laughs> wow. yeah oh it's so long oh, look at that this is New Balance and Yeezy's <laughs> site <laughs> 2018 called okay they want their Yeezy's back <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, uh, good to have him back on the show. Brandon was really, really excited mm. when he found out that you were going to be on the show. He texted me in bold capital letters, I want to be on the show! <laughs> yeah, I, sh- I should be very worried then. Yeah! Nah, chill out, bro. <laughs> You're making me sound like some villain or something. You to destroy He's somebody. a very competitive fella on the play- in the in the sport field. But I'm not- <laughs> <laughs> oh, then he- confirm. Co- then, yeah. then we are, bro. Can yeah, we go I'm, for badminton I'm, one of these days? Definitely. Hey, bro, I'm no, damn, no, no, I'm no. damn competitive. <laughs> <laughs> Why? No, but I've seen your badminton videos. It cannot lah. It, it, it can be, it can be this laming. I mean, it's it's, you know, to disarm a person. Uh-huh. Uh huh. So disarm and then you play against me, bam, kala. Yeah, uh, yeah, okay. Ah, as long play. as it's not dancing, it's fine. Dancing, uh, dancing, not not my end. No, no, no. Both, both, both of us die. Yeah. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we have back on the show today. We have YB Said Sadik. Woo! Yes. <laughs> welcome, welcome, welcome. Thank you, thank you very much for having me back. How's it been, man? The last time you were here one year ago, huh? Yeah, I mean, yeah. Actually, just about a year ago. I know. It's like, yeah. see, we, we renovated the place for you. It looks exactly the same, bro. Just without the table. <laughs> <laughs> That's no budget, lah. You know, we rolled out the the grey carpet for you. <laughs> but we are going to renovate the place, lah. So this yeah, means that you're obligated to come back for the third time. It's so like yeah, it's like no it's no problem it, at all. It's like uh, it's it's like good luck, you know. Every time we have uh, YB on the show, <laughs> he's the pineapple. Starting, yeah, you know, we have <laughs> he's the pineapple. <laughs> yeah, the we renovate, renovate, guys, renovate. <laughs> yeah, but you know, one year passed. A lot has happened. Yeah. How have you been, lah? I'm good. I'm good. Uh, a lot more excited, optimistic. Uh, and the road ahead will be long, mm-hmm. tough, arduous, but I am still excited for the future. Still can't dance, though. <laughs> and then badminton. I think even 20, 30 years down the road, cannot badminton much better. <laughs> rest, assured, rest assured, the time where the videos were leaked was the worst moment. So now definitely better. I'm looking forward, yeah. man. I'm looking forward. Yeah. 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 Hey, hey, you know, funny thing is the last time when you were on the show, mm. you know, the, the elections were not even announced yet. Yep. And oh yeah, we, that's true. Yeah, we, we yeah. just came on the show, chit chat, you know, yeah. talked about our uh, our beliefs yeah. and your beliefs. And boom, suddenly elections happened. Yeah. And then <laughs> there was a change again. Yeah. <laughs> is it like deja vu or no? Is it how's it comparable to twenty eighteen? Uh, well, I think twenty eighteen was generally a very different feeling. Yep. Now it's like mixed feeling, right? It's like uh, um, your mom marrying uh, and you get a new stepdad. Right? Yep. Something like that, right? So it's like, mm, do I like it? Do I not? Let's wait and see. Uh, 2018 is like, yeah! And then it just went downhill. So <laughs> I think this time around, we still wait and see. Did you, but mm. do, you see, do you see the same atmosphere as 2018 or not? Oh, no, of course not. Yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm fairly certain I'm not the one uh, who thinks of this. But um, I do. Eh? Uh, I'm still optimistic. When I see changes, I don't necessarily see it as something bad. It just shows that the people are now ultimately in power and everyone in power, including myself, yeah. would be really afraid and scared because the people are the true kingmakers. Mm. So how has it been? Are you, are you currently facing a lot? I, look, man, we, we, <laughs> we had uh, chats off microphone and stuff like that. like, yeah. oh, bro, it's tough. Yeah, yeah, you know, true. it's not easy. And you just long mentioned nights, it. Long night. <laughs> yeah. yeah. How, how, how's it been? I mean, people want to know. It's been uh, tough. I mean... I mean, running a, a youth startup <laughs> or a political startup is tough, right? I mean, you don't have the kind of resources. Uh, you are understaffed. Uh, and above and beyond that, people see you as being too young uh, without much experience. So the road ahead will definitely be tough, especially when you are smack between two huge political blocks and coalitions which are heavily funded, resource patronage, and we don't have any of those. But I think it's a lot more exciting because now I can actually train... Uh, young leaders to yeah. also and put them ahead of me and above and beyond that I think now it's really about innovating and thinking out of the box to get the message out right I mean really talking about policies looking at the politics of service uh, so while it's daunting at the same time it is 
exciting. Um, so I don't only see it as oh because there are state elections. I see it as a 10 to 20 year journey down the road, which will be tough mm. with a lot of losses, but it is ultimately worth it because this struggle is worth it. But then again, all the previous politicians when they first started to get into politics, they were mm. about your age. Mm. So why why are they throwing the whole like you're not old enough or you're? It's true. I mean, uh, ironically, yeah, it is uh, very true. I think maybe because then they joined a uh, mainstream or traditional political party that was already powerful and yeah. well known, lah. Yeah, the structures are very much in place. Uh, but for many of us, uh, Inmuda is really starting from scratch. Mm. But again, that's what startups do, right? I mean, we have disrupted many different fields. Why not politics? Mm. Now, I very rarely do I have a piece of paper when I have guests on. Usually, I'm just putting the paper by the side and I'm just <laughs> chatting, very chillax and all. But for you, Sadiq, I have a very grand piece oh, yeah. of paper here. because like got, got, got Q, Q&A and then got uh, correct and wrong answers. Or not? There's no right points? and wrong answers. It's only uh, subjective <laughs> questions. Though, okay? It's either A, B, C, D or all of the above. Uh, he, told me, he told me that, okay, <laughs> I want to ask him as many questions as I can. I want to yeah. grill him. I'm like, okay, can, no true. problem. See, <laughs> can, can. And there can, is can. a reason why you are here, right? Obviously, yeah. the state elections are coming up. And then, like you said, you know, you're starting a brand new political startup party. And it's yeah. not easy. Like you said, yeah. wrong, long road ahead. It's going to be very arduous as well. Yeah. Let's start with the obvious, first of all, yeah. which is the very basic question is, why did Muda leave? the Pakatan Harapan Coalition. And so what is Muda's That's end goal point. here, right? Yeah. I mean, this is the, let's just, just address the elephant in sure. the room, shall we? Why did Muda leave the Pakatan Harapan Coalition? And what's your end goal here? I mean, I have to correct that question because mm-hmm. we never left. We You're were right. never accepted <laughs> to begin with. Yeah, I mean, okay. that must be uh, on the table. Mm. I mean, prior to elections, uh, we already submitted our application mm. to join Pakatan Harapan. Yep. And we were promised that we will be allowed in. But then they said, oh... Because then the Minister of, of Home Affairs was under Prakata, right, was under Prakata National, mm-hmm. so they'll never allow. Wait after elections, we waited until after elections, and then sent three letters and were not responded. But right. it's okay. I mean, politics is politics. Maybe that's the internal strategy. But that left us hanging. And above and beyond that, I thought, okay, let's just try and negotiate to get um, policy concessions. Okay. Right? We list down 10 to 20 reforms. So, okay, we'll, we'll not contest uh, in, in the mm. state elections, but please commit this in one year time you'll do this policy reforms right. even then we can't even get a meeting not even one meeting so I think it signals mm-hmm. that there's not much appetite for reforms and policy changes mm-hmm. which then got us thinking hey we're here to set up a disruptive youth led political party right. are we just gonna keep quiet and get bullied around or are we gonna finally put our neck out and invest in Malaysia for the next 20 years no matter how difficult it gets. So in that vein, when you mentioned that, you know, this, the fact is that you guys tried, you attempted, you know, and in yep. your own words, you made it quite publicly known that you actually oh, tried to reach out yep. to the premiership, you know, to, to the leadership to try yep. and get at least an audience. Like you said, just an appointment to Correct. get this sort of 10, 20 points up, what you yep. want to see, what you want to achieve yep. as a youth-centric party, yep. but you were ignored. Yep. Essentially, you were just placed out and they don't, they really don't care about you, mm. right, in many ways. So, is this now contesting on your own? Is this like a reaction to what you just mentioned? And if it is so, is it justified? If if it is a reaction, then it's not justified. Because to be honest, again, in politics, you have to be very calm and measured. Right. So that's why the decision is not based on positions, seats, mm. power. In reality, it is based on reforms. Because why I joined politics is to ensure that Malaysia becomes a developed country, mm. a country which celebrates diversity and not merely tolerate it a country in which focus on policy making based on data and science, not just on sentiments and personalities. So I think there's a lot to be done there. And now when we are in the position of power to be able to institute those reforms, those should be the ultimate priority, not backtracking those reforms, not saying something else before election and doing something completely different. So when I see as each day passes by, those reforms are no longer put on centre stage and existing reforms are backtracked whether it's on asset declarations, which previously was done and now it's not, mm. whether it's on the Prime Minister not taking up another portfolio, e.g. Minister of Finance, now Prime Minister taking up Minister of Finance, mm-hmm. Minister of Wilayah, and also other agencies which are under ministry is not absorbed. So the centralization of power, mm. I mean, criminal cases being indefinitely postponed because they are now in power. Mind you, if it was done one year ago, there will be protests on the streets. Right. Mm-hmm. So there are many red lines uh, being broken. I mean, even on education, right? Back then, for the past 20 years, we said that our, that, that our education system is broken. We need to transition, albeit not immediately in one day, but there is a gradual transition from a pure race-based system to one which is built on merit or at least needs-based. Right? Needs-based, which also uh, uh, takes in factors yeah. of race, religion, socioeconomic background, and everything else. But again, 
what happened before election, what's it now is completely different. Now it's like complete silence on the issue by saying we're going to stick to status quo. Interesting. You mentioned the word merit there, which is obviously very important. And like you said, when, you, when people of our, the yesteryears, when they join politics, they join a very, very already existing political party, which was already there. The tradition was there. The system was in place. And then they just join even as a young man yep. or a young woman. Now, when because Muda is, is a relatively... Well, not relatively, as compared to the other two blocks, let's oh, yeah, just face it, you're like an infant. Yeah, correct. You're yeah, literally yeah. a baby, right? Technically, we're not even two years old yet. Exactly. Yeah. So because of that, Muda technically has very little to no track record to show for now. Mm, mm. And that's also very factual. Yeah. So do you think that this is one of the reasons why so-called the the the, 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 the existing coalition, they the, the pact that they have, they sort of ignored you or sort mm. of put you one side? Do you think it's because when they look at uh, Muda, they, they see like, hey, you know, we've worked with all these component parties mm. who have years of track record mm. and that's why you got to lend our ear to them. But Muda, like you say, only less than two years old yeah. and that's why one of the reasons why we can't pay no mind to him for now. Yeah. Do you think it's one of the reasons why you sort of didn't get yeah. an audience and because of the track record, yeah. there's no history to yeah. show? I, I, I can't speak on behalf of uh, PH leaders, yeah. but I see a sense of complacency and comfort uh, where no one is challenging the multiracial moderate voter base. Right. So they see this is our safe bank, it's just a number, uh, it will not go anywhere because the alternative is Prakata National, which plays the politics of race and religion to the extreme end. So as a consequence, okay, never mind, just uh, forget this voter base for a while, let's try to pander to win over the additional voter bank mm. from uh, PN, which I think actually splits and divides Malaysia even more. In the end, you will lose both. I mm. remember in 2019, when Power of Power, we tried to like, we forget our multiracial voter bank, tried to win over AMNO and pass so much to the point that in the end, you lose both. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, it's bad for Malaysia. Yeah. I think today, the point in which Muda enters and provides competition, I think then the debate about policies, the debate about ideas and ideals will be put to centre stage. And you cannot take your voter bank and safe deposit lightly anymore. And above and beyond that, especially today, mm. you know, when people know, and, and especially in state elections, people know that they can afford to be a lot more strategic. Federal government will not change. You know, state government, as what PHA said, they're very confident to win 51 out of 56 seats. Uh, uh, Ali Majlis is them. The, the, parli the parliamentarian is them. Ketua Kampo is them. Literally from top to bottom is them. And mm. there's one adon, right? So... Uh, we're asking to be given a chance. So in the end, we can be the voice of conscience, the alternative, the additional choice, uh, to be the check and balance uh, so would you and say invest in the future. That that is your end goal with coming out on your own and contesting as a standalone. Of course, now with PSM, yeah. uh, is this sort of the end goal? Then you know, not to like you know, one of those things. A lot of people on mm. the netizens, I don't know what other yeah. word to use it. You know, they they sort of term you as like this. Uh, this party or this individual, mm. this personality, aka you, yeah. uh, you know, being being having a, a, a knee-jerk reaction to being mm. ignored. You know what I mean, yeah, right? Understood. Because he's he's being ignored. So I'm gonna I'm a I'm a like a teenager. Yeah. I'm gonna do and rebel. I'm gonna do it on my own. Mm. That's why it comes back full circle when I asked yeah. you. So what is the end goal yeah. here? What is the vision for you guys standing up? Because you spoke a little bit about the unity and yeah. you see how people lose both in a sense. Yeah. But now at the same time, this very action of you also splitting, mm. it kind of it kind of is the same thing yeah. of you know you potentially mm. might lose Three but between mm. three and it might go down to all the way to nothing. That's to fair. nobody you know what I mean, right? That's fair. So so that's why I say what is the end goal? That's yeah. why I started off with that question to set that's good. The yeah. I will get a heart attack right. if my end goal is only for the state elections. I'll mm. get a heart attack because mm -hmm. it's almost impossible and implausible and very, very tough. I'll admit it from the start, right? right. That's why out of two hundred forty seats, we are realistic, we're only contesting in about 15 to 20, which is not even 10%. Sure. So we cannot take down any federal government, we can't take down any state government, mm. right? However, when you start thinking this is an investment 10, 20 years down the road to get your message out, to get your ideas out, to start training young leaders who were never given a chance and opportunity before this, to get our message that we want to try our best to get 50% of women candidates. These are our ideas and policies on education reforms. This is our ideas and policies on institutional reforms. Then at least when you start thinking of investing in the next 20 years, from the heart attack, it becomes, oh, that's actually not that bad. Right. So I've already cautioned my leaders and my members, mm. including Malaysians, it's not just about the state election. Mm. I think we've witnessed uh, different political parties, blocks, huge ones, yeah. saying many things but doing something completely different after elections. I think this state election is the best platform to send a wake-up call to those who walk the corridors of power 
that after election they'll have to buck up if not in the next five years when GE finally comes the ultimate punishment will come mm. but it's better that the warning shot is made in the state elections mm. so, so my hope is that every vote for Muda is a reminder for the PH government in the federal level to buck up to institute those reforms and ensure that what they promised will be implemented so okay no no let's just rewind back a bit mm. oh, Brandon ask a lot of questions huh? oh sorry I almost forgot yeah Jin, go for it <laughs> oh, I mean, visib- I mean visible is it it's why <laughs> it's not the end yet <laughs> <laughs> hey what you have for lunch uh, I had McDonald's <laughs> oh, nice. I'm kidding okay <laughs> now okay, state elections is coming up how important is state elections as compared to the general elections because people mm-hmm. be like huh elections again uh, huh yeah. must go out and vote uh. so yeah. what so people are, you know, some people out there so if we don't vote for the people that we usually vote for mm. will the government change mm. so technically I need to bring it back a step because you know let's not assume that everybody knows how yeah. the system That's works fair. because to fair. be honest <laughs> I don't even know how the system works mm. until like today mm. I mean like yeah Yes, I do yeah. get a right idea, but the younger ones, yeah. for the lack of a better word, they're not that interested. Mm. Mm. So how important how important is this as compared to the general elections? Yeah. Allow me to give context. Huh? These state elections are different than the typical state election because I think for the very first time, half of the voting population will be expected to vote for control over state governments. Yeah. Back then, it's always like Joe is only Joe and yep. Melaka, all separate, one, two million. Now, 10 million Malaysians mm-hmm. in six different states uh, can vote to determine the future of the state governments. And state governments are very important. Mm-hmm. Again, uh, I think a lot of young people care about climate change. Climate issues often are tied to land issues. Land issues are in the state. Yep. Mm. We care about our day-to-day issues, whether it's about potholes, lighting, you know, cleanliness, animal welfare, everything. These are all under majlis. Majlis is under state. Oh, okay. I'm so, so tempted to bring out a local council hey, elections, Brandon, but Brandon. I'm going to let you uh, go okay, on uh, Wait, your turn. That one is Please ask me about that. Huh? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm I, so... Th- you yeah, know what? I'm very oh, irked. I'm, I'm very irked about that. I've said... Yeah. Okay, okay, okay. okay, 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 so, okay. Uh, but, but that all falls under state. Either way, whoever wins state elections, federal government will still stay. Okay. Right? And uh, most likely in states like Slango, where PH is very confident, they will stay as well. But I think it's very important to get the alternative checks and balances in. And above and beyond that... This is almost like a midterm election where voters will see, do they like what's going on? Do they not? And that message or that wake up call is very important because that will be a reminder to those who walk the corridors of power whether they should stick to the path by playing safe status quo or do they radically change and start committing on the reforms which they promised. So I, some, uh, there was a conversation that I had with a bunch of friends about the state elections and stuff like that. They said that the difference between state elections and the federal government is, I think like you, how, how many days of parliament that you have to attend uh, per year? Parliament de- okay, depends, but usually it's about 60 days. Like the state government, apparently they only attend it for two weeks. Oh my God. Is that, is that correct? Because yes. the, and then, the, then the, the, the conclusion there is that, what can they possibly change oh, in two weeks is, of sitting in the state government? Some, okay, some state governments have shorter seating, some have very long seatings. I think Slango has longer seatings. Okay. Trunganu, if I'm not mistaken, has less. Okay. Uh, it depends. Like in Johor, um, they have specialized seatings where you can speak but there's there's no interruption in parliament, too many interruptions with a lot of vulgarity. So got different <laughs> modulations, right? Uh, but ultimately again, don't just look at what happens in the state like, state legislative assembly. Like in Slango, for example, the power of the Metri Bursa and Excos mm-hmm. are humongous. For an example, mm. the issue of PJD Link, right? Over construction, uh, the lack of investment in public transportation, the lack of transparency because the agreement is still hidden under the official secret set. Can mm. you imagine? Back then we said we want transparency, now we're hiding behind OSA mm. uh, on a project which will affect, I mean, potentially millions of Slangoreans. But that can be done ultimately with, with a signature from the Metri Bursa and Exco. Mm-hmm. Well, this is such a huge issue. I mean, there are so many issues. The, uh, the, the, uh, the degazettment of forests, forest reserves, climate change and all of this. So that's where, I mean, state control over the future of Malaysia is humongous. Especially when you look in states like Slango, which is acknowledged since 10, 20 years ago to be the economic engine of Malaysia. Almost yep. a quarter of our GDP comes from Slango. Mm. I mean, since the past 20 years. So... This is something which is very serious and that's why I hope that voters will care um, because without just realising actually a lot of the things which affect our day-to-day interactions take place via state governments, councils, etc. Mm-hmm. I'm so interested to know actually, Sadiq, like you were very, very close and you, you know, and these people that I also similarly look up to, mm. people like Hannah Yo, 
people like even you know Yobi and Yobi. things and people like that you know and and you had a very good rapport with them meaning to say you had a very good relationship with them yeah. and in many ways I also see uh, the relationship whereby I think in many ways you look up to them as well mm. when you you know when you sort of came out I'm going to mm. use the word came out just for easy reference <laughs> uh, okay it's just easier to understand no la. problem yeah so now that you're standing on your own contesting on your own did you sort of consult them did you have any communication with them before the before uh, you contested on your own and what were their reactions you know because I see you guys are more like friends instead of just purely colleagues yeah to be honest, I think they knew the dilemma which we were in right. because it's not new. Mm. Immediately after elections, uh, they knew that Muda was never called. Mm. Uh, I mean, even in unity government meetings where there are parties without any single seat. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And they were called? They were called and Muda was not. Mm. Ah. Um, then I think I, they and also myself, I start to realize that this is just a strategy to wait us out, die, and then get me into one of the mainstream parties. Because almost all parties have invited me to join right. mm -hmm. their party, but it's just me joining mm -hmm. and leaving everyone behind. That's not why I joined politics. It's not about Said Sadiq and a ministerial position or a GLC chairmanship. If I wanted that, I would have picked 2020 to support Sheraton Moon. Yeah. Right. But that's not the path, right? I mean, it's about building a team of young, credible leaders, training them, giving them uh, an, an, an opportunity, and hopefully turbocharge Malaysia forward. So mm. I think to some extent, that obviously the advice was try meet up with the Prime Minister, try meet up with the Deputy Prime Minister. Mm. Uh, with the Prime Minister, I tried many times. I mean, mm. I've taken those steps, but I think until the end, when uh, I think it's not about the seat negotiations, when I start to realise so many red lines were broken, mm -hmm. I'm like, is this worth it? I yeah. mean, I, I keep asking myself, why join politics? Do I join politics to play safe? Do I join politics only to keep my seat? Mm -hmm. It's not that. Heck, during the, my first election, I didn't even expect to win. Mm. But if I abandon my principles at such an early age for power, I mean, I think internally I'm dead. Yeah. So you, it's interesting because, you know, wow. It's a lot of to unpack here, honestly. <laughs> yeah. But it's great that you're sharing very openly and honestly. Because I think people are very interested to know the thought mm. process behind this. Because until now, I don't know how openly you've actually talked about this and to yeah, share that's true. this part you know because a lot of people are bashing you online let's yeah. just face it and a lot of people are like I'm and they have I, the right to and, and yeah. a lot of people are saying like how, I'm do you deal, how, how, how do you deal with that though I mean again it's to I mean whenever there are like a lot of curse words try to look above and beyond that but look at the main reason why they are cursing mm. often there's a common line learn from it see where I can address where I can make myself better mm. and never take it personally that's why in politics I always do not take things personally because once you take it personally, you will not survive. Your mental health will be affected and above and beyond that, you move into the more toxic toxic path of politics where mm. you, it's more about vengeance, you know. Mm, revenge um, politics revenge, and things like which that. Is, yeah. Which is not right. So yeah. that's why even when 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 I made the, the decision, does it mean I cut ties with people? No. But I think this is this is a decision which is not just about me and my friends, but this is a decision which to me is about principles, the future of the country and the future of a party which we set up together to go through the tough path ahead, bracing the storm, yeah. but knowing that in the end, we are here to stay and to fight for that better Malaysia. What about the youth parties? Because you, Muda is a youth-centric party. Mm. And I believe that all, if not most, uh, most, if not all the major component parties in either side of the coalition, they have youth wings as well. Mm. right? And some of them are quite strong youth wings. Yep. So why didn't you feel like you could get into one of these youth wings. For example, let's just PKR's youth wing, for example. Mm. Why couldn't you put yourself as the head of PKR youth and bolster the youth's voice, the mm. youth's uh, wants, needs, you know, whatever the cause is, via PKR's youth and sort of bolster that party as a whole and then in turn bolster co co the coalition from that position? Was That's it because, yeah, was, weren't you, were you being stifled? Were you being quieted, you know, what was the reason? Because all of them have their youth wings, right? Okay. Why go out and start another youth-centric I, I give you a very simple example, and it is a real example. Mm. And since we're having a very open conversation, yeah. I think the audience can assess as well. Look at the youth leader of PKR today. Mm. My colleague as well, Sadara Adam Adili, the Deputy yep. Minister of Youth and Sports. We all knew him as someone who was vocal against corruption, mm -hmm. Against the implementing uh, 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 for the um, uh, abolition of the Sedition Act, you mm -hmm. know all these outdated laws, uh, vocal against um, uh, in support of a merit-based system yep. for AUKU education reforms and all of that. 
Now when a lot of the promises are being abandoned, worse U-turns being made, do you see him speaking up? Ask yourself honestly this question. Mm. I don't blame him. I blame the institution. Why I say that? Because in the end, youthwings are youthwings. You are limited to be second or third class and you will never be able to truly shape the outcome of policy making. If not, you can be very vocal and set the direction. Right? So, I do not want to be stifled in that way. If anything, I don't think we should limit the ability of women and youth to only wings. If there is a capable young leader, a capable woman to be the president and lead, allow for that to happen. But above and beyond that, I think the role of young people is to be very vocal, to speak up, to be the voice of conscience for the people. If young people, loo- if young people lose their idealism at a very young age because of the structures of power and obedience, I worry about the future of our country. Wouldn't you say then, with that statement, all the youth wings of every major component party is as good as dead? Because what you just mentioned, right? I wouldn't say that. So if you look at the actually glorious days of AMNO, yeah. Pemuda AMNO in the 1970s, 1980s, the point in which even, I mean, then many of the Menteri Besar and chief ministers were in their mid-30s, mm. even early 30s. There was a time in which the youth wing will be the ones who will be protesting against the president, will be the ones proposing solutions mm. and will be adopted like one or two months after. They were so vocal and strong. But today, it's very different. Right. Due to patronage, hierarchical system, sure. you know, at times blind obedience, that's where the problem rises. So I think maybe it's context in time as well. Mm. Um, but today, I think if you ask many people to look at what stance and principles said before election and what's happening today, you'll start to realize actually people will start questioning whether the ideals are still there or not. Mm. But I don't think there's enough people questioning. That's that's that's. Mm. Would, wouldn't you think there's enough? Not enough people questioning that. Because when there are people who question, then they get relegated and sidelined, uh. right? I mean, uh, <laughs> that's the issue. But don't be afraid to be relegated and sidelined. Again, you get slightly afraid and you start thinking only about the next one month or one year or even one electoral cycle. You start to panic. Oh my god, what will happen in my seat? Oh my god, am I, am I going to lose? So what? I don't know why people are so scared of losing, right? I mean, I rather lose my seat than lose my principles and ideals at a very young age. If I lose, I lose in the hands of the people. Then me losing myself to my own hands, my own doing. Because I'm fearful of taking risks. Because I'm fearful of fighting the good fight for the sake of political convenience. I think that's much, much worse. So once you take the the fear of losing, yep. it becomes much better. Because the fact of the matter is a lot of the most successful change makers, they don't immediately win in one or two cycles. I mean, even Barack Obama had his losses. Biden, President Biden today lost many times. Mm-hmm. Imran Khan lost, I think, four or five electoral cycles. I mean, India today under BJP, previously it's like Congress for like 20, 30 years. I can name so many examples. Point of the matter is, it's always a journey, a process takes time. Your message may not be accepted today, but stick to it, be consistent to it so that people know what you are fighting for, your ideals are out there. If it's not this election, it will be the next election. If it's not then, someone else will take over but you know that someone else represents those ideals to make Malaysia a developed country. So even as if it's going to take like 20 years and by the time you're going to be like 50, and are you going to oppose to the younger ones that are basically going to speak up against you? Yeah, I mean, uh, I hope so. I really hope they don't lose that rigour and idealism to speak up against the structures of power. And by then, rest assured, is that if it's up to me, I'll leave it to a highly decentralised power structure. No more you know, power centralization in the hands of the Prime Minister and Cabinet, a lot more checks and balances, returning power to Parliament, not just now every single major appointment done by the Prime Minister. GLC selection should not be based on political rewards, but should be based on merit. If they are people, good people, for example, if you'll be in, or today, uh, Wong Chen, right, applied to become one of the board members of GLC, out of merit, they'll get it. I'll be very frank. And should we stop them just because they are politicians? No, if they genuinely deserve it, they should. But have a proper board, an independent board to assess their credentials, their merit, their experience, track record, service. Do that. I think that's the best way. Then people ask, but Sadiq, stop being so idealistic. Where do you put all the MPs and, and Adons and all these uh, supporters of politicians, you know? I mean, they've been working for the past 20, 10, 10, 10, 20 years. My argument, have more select committees. Select committees are where checks and balances actually take place, but you cannot overrule, for example, Petronas. You cannot overrule Felda, Felkra, Tabung Haji. Why our GLCs today are in deep... Okay, I was with S, but <laughs> deep problem. <laughs> it's because of that. So many political interference and decision-making not based on data for political interest. And now we have to build them out. 8 billion, 11 billion, Felda, 8 billion, uh, 9 billion. 
uh, Tabung Haji before this almost 10 billion. You know whose money? Your money, taxpayers' money. Because of oh, political rewards, it's okay. Let them control it. I said, no, balance it out. Separate it. You want, if you want to join politics and be rich, this is not for you. But let's say you want to join a select committee to check on the decision-making process and report back to parliament or the state legislative assembly, feel free. Do that. If you are genuinely good and talented, but you are in a political party, apply. Have an open application process for you to become heads of GLCs, agencies, etc. Try something new. Point I'm trying to make is, we keep on talking about changing the system, changing the system. Now, the same old players for the past 20, 30 years are still in control of the system. And when their turn comes, it's still maintaining status quo. And I get very worried about it. I don't think Malaysia will be a failed state, mm. but we'll be stuck in the middle. And I don't think Malaysia should only be stuck in the middle. Yeah. Well, what do you think about timing then? Because, you know, when you share your points and your, your ideas, idealism, ideologies, however you wanna, we want to term it, I don't, I don't disagree with it. In fact, you know, as as a Malaysian, I wholly agree with what you're saying. You know, because this is something that I really hope to see as well for not just for our future, mm. for the sake of our children's future and our children's children's future, right? And I totally, hundred percent agree with you on all the ideologies and everything like that. But let, let's focus a little bit on timing here, yeah. because like you said, you know, it's it's only been uh, seven. I don't know how many months. November and eight now months. What, eight, eight months. months. It's only been eight months. Yes, we see some red lines being sort of crossed or not supposed to be crossed, but has been crossed already. Mm. And these are all red flags as well, right? Yep. Everyone can see, everyone can assess. Uh, but now eight months in, right? And there are some changes, although mm. moving at a snail's pace for yep. obvious reasons, because we're in a coalition with mm. Barisan and Pakatan. So things are moving, but at a very snail's pace. That's a what fair point. You're right. So, and you agree with that. So what do you think about Muda's timing here? Because yep. Muda has been only around for less than two years. Yeah. And the timing of this is actually crucial to sort of Pakatan's position and standing. Yeah. If this were to be done, say three or four years later during G or during the run up to G, or maybe even one year later, but the timing that you chose is now. Mm. If it's four years from now, that's too late to send a wake up call. Mm. That's why this is a state election. It's not a federal election. Mm. So that's the stakes why are I'm lower. So yeah. that's why go now. Correct. That's why I'm not advocating. Mm for the removal of the federal government. That sure. would be wrong. Then I say, obviously, you need time. Mm -hmm. But after eight months, when you realise a lot of red lines are being broken, and most likely after state election, if they're too comfortable, I think criminal cases will be dropped. Mm -hmm. I have a strong feeling that reforms will be forgotten. I mean, today, I mean, from the Sedition Act, which is applied today, to many, 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 many other red lines which yeah. have been broken. If we don't send a wake-up call now, my fear is for the next four to five years until GE, it will be even worse. But if we send a clear, decisive wake-up call now, post-election, the federal government will start to realise, hey, I can no longer take my support base lightly. That my support base is not lo blindly loyal, but can actually punish me. So but I think when that happens... But, yeah. but isn't the support base like very flimsy at this point of time? Because it can go any... have a GE tomorrow, and it could just fall all over again. Yeah, but this government has two that support. I don't think yeah. there will suddenly be a GE, but... I agree with you that the majority of voters today are actually very reasonable. They're not blindly loyal. Yeah. Right. And that's why I'm hoping that that wake-up call will be sent now. <laughs> you know, I mean, you still have a long time ahead to go, by the way. You send, send that wake-up call now. I mean, stop backtracking on your reforms. I mean, if you truly believe in celebrating diversity, then don't deny a 19-year-old a pre-university course, but that same lady can get into Harvard University. And then, again, when the question was asked, oh, no, we're going to keep status quo. I mean, I get baffled by things like this. This, by the way, I dislike it. People keep on blaming Amno only. Let's not forget that many of the Amno ministers that I met up are actually okay with this, where there's political funding act, mm -hmm. two term limit, many things. So I don't know why is there no urgency. Mm. My fear is the same mistake which was done in 2018, 2019, where you try to forget your voter base. Am yeah, I like these people will be loyal to me? Mm -hmm. Young people will be loyal to me. Multiracial, moderate voters will be loyal to me, and then try to pander, 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 and then. They in the end they lose both sides. It gets even worse, right? And then you lose everything. <laughs> so I think now is the time to be decisive. Right. Implement the tough reforms. It may be unpopular now. However, in the next five years, the public will understand. But that wake up call must be set now. So you genuinely don't think it's premature because they're only eight months into governance, and it's not a premature thing for Muda to do this now. Maybe not one year later mm. behind doing it behind the scenes. 
do you, in, is there any way where, where you feel or you have sat down and sort of now you have the time or benefit of hindsight to sort of reflect mm. and, and maybe think to yourself, maybe I could have done this behind the scenes and s- continue to work behind the scenes to get yourself known to sort of have more time for Muda to create better track record, mm. to have more people. Because right now, the truth is, when people talk about Muda, I'm not talking about personality politics here, but in many ways... Unfortunately, or fortunately, whichever side of the coin you want to look at, when people look at Muda, they just look at Said Sadiq. Uh, you have to know this. Yeah, and and, and, and you, you know, it can't be denied. Let's yeah, let's be yeah. honest, right? I remember you asked me the same as one well previous session. Right. See, the problem is this: people want Muda to grow, but at the same time, many of those in the coalition just want us to pff, die and then join them. Mm. So it's more like they just want to. They just want to take the strongest. So it's like right? a chicken and egg situation for you. Correct. So when so is the? How can we grow? If we're not even allowed to contest and even try new candidates, how can we grow? Mm. I mean, in the end, yeah, it's just fair about enough, yeah. Sadiq joining and again, Sadiq, Sadiq again, <coughs> right? And and I'm not doing this for Sadiq, Sadiq. It must be a whole team of leaders, a new breed of leaders. That's one. Two, it would be premature for Muda to make this move if we, if we did not try. Right. And we did to a point that we just wanted to discuss policies. Mm-mm. I mean, Amno is discussing about GLC chairmanships which are now under them. Mm. Same party in which led those GLCs caused billions of losses in which our taxpayers' money are used to cover. And now we are repeating the same mm. cycle. Back then, we said no more dropping of criminal charges and cases. Mm-hmm. You know, We were protesting on the streets and now we're talking about a pardoning. Parties which <laughs> for reforms can't even talk, can't even say, I'm against this. They're quiet. Heck, I mean, the potentiality of criminal cases to be dropped after election is real. Now, you, you feel free to ask about me. I will answer very honestly <laughs> after this, okay? Yeah. Right? yeah. <laughs> so let, let me just, you know, I want to be very upfront about it. I don't, yeah. don't want to hide about it. So to me, I get very worried. You know, pushing for reforms, not being heard, no meeting. And then even existing ones. I mean, you know, back then there was a few red lines, mm-hmm. right? Not just about... Uh, indefinitely postponing criminal cases. That was a red line. Yeah. Now it's like, it doesn't matter. Mm-hmm. Deputy Prime Minister, we all know. Mm-hmm. Okay, another red line. Another red line, centralization of power. Right? Prime Minister holds Minister of Finance, Minister of Wilaya, all major agencies. There are so many... Mind you, this didn't happen before. We've already changed that practice since 2018. The following governments and Prime Ministers actually kept to that. Yeah. Asset, asset decorations, etc. So point I'm trying to make here is, does this mean that the federal government should be removed? No. That's why I'm not removing the federal government. There's no way I can remove it. I can't even remove a state government. But since federal government, state government, member of parliament, Ali Majlis and Kota Kampung are all from the same coalition, what I'm asking for is to send a wake-up mm. call so that they realise if they don't back up, then the next five years will be a completely different outcome. So before we reach there, it's better that we act now to send a wake-up call. I want to give you a hypothetical situation. Sorry, Jane. It's okay, yeah. I'm listening. I'm the sideline <laughs> over here. I will play I will play a sound effect once in a while. Hey, applause. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, truly applause for all the Hey, can you hire this everything. fellow to be a politician or not? I think he can talk a lot, you know. No, I want to give you a hypothetical situation, yeah. Sadiq, because uh, because I really want to assess and sort of get down to the root here. Yeah. Uh, and this is for your benefit, by the way, just so you know, I'm not doing this to be like against please, anything please. else. Because, yeah. you know, we're all open here. And yeah. this is actually really for Muda's benefit yeah. when you think of it long term and when you look back on this. And so... It, the hypothetical situation is this, right? Because I really want to try to get to the root here. Mm. Say, for example, let's wind back the clock of time. The clock of time, the hands of the clock. Mm. Um, and say, for example, you managed to get an audience with uh, with the premiership, with Anwar Ibrahim himself, okay. after, say, the third time when you when you send a letter and say, hey, I would just like a meet up to talk about policy yeah. reform. So even the, 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 the chance or the opportunity. And say he gave you that audience, say, okay, let's talk about it. And we talk about the policy, son, you know, you have a very good and fruitful conversation. Yeah. Would Muda still have left and now go about contesting on your own? That's, that's a very good question. I think if the commitment for reforms were made, signed and publicized, I don't think there's a need for us to do it. But I need to be shown, and Muda as a party needs to be convinced that there is genuine appetite for reforms. That is our ultimate priority. That's why, unlike other parties who are negotiating mm. about GLC positions and distribution of powers, we were talking about concessions, actual political concessions via policies. And the fact that that yeah. was not even put on the table. Right. And mind you, and when I, it's not I didn't try bringing it internally, sure. I did. 
Sure. And when I went public about it, whether it's on paid internships, wage transparency laws, or even on the 11.2 billion LCS uh, military ship yeah. scandal, which, mind you, paid it's shit not, was the yeah. number one issue before election. Correct. Bigger than 1MDB, not me. They said it. Mm. And now it's like, oh no, never mind. Wait, wait for PAC report. PAC report has been presented last year in parliament. Auditor General report has been declassified. That's why they were the ones who said, put this person in prison. I didn't say it. I said, go through the, uh, the, the proper court process. They said it. And today, they want to reprimand me for bringing something which they brought up last year. Right. So, can you imagine? I mean, I can understand I the frustration, you know. Yeah. I can I can tell and I can honestly understand the frustration. But the reason I'm asking you this is sort of to separate mm. and to, to give, you know, give you the opportunity to sort of also set aside because the reason I ask that question is to determine whether Muda confessing on its own mm. is an emotional reaction or is it truly to fulfill the end goals? Because truth be told, even if Anwar were to meet you mm. and give you three hours of his time a day, yeah. but say for example, they are not, they're crossing every red line which you've mentioned yep. quite a few times here in terms of all whether JLC appointments or yep. appointment hits and things like that. And they continue to do that. Then we'll still contest. Right? Then we'll definitely still contest. You will still contest, right? Because yep. I, the, yeah, so that's the reason why I asked the question, you know, to also to determine whether this is an emotional reaction mm. to not having Anwar appoint you or to mm. give you the sense that, hey, Muda is fighting for something much bigger than an emotional reaction, you know? And like you, s- and that's why I wanted to know if just say hypothetically, if he were to meet you, whether you would still leave. And I think now maybe when you think about it, I think your answer would change to say that you would still have contested on your own. Yeah, because again, if... Rather than say you would have stayed. Yeah, if there are no commitments for reforms, then what's the purpose? Right. I mean, why bother being government? I mean... Are you trying to sign a wake up call right now? Yes. But I think they're not they're not afraid of your wake up call until something mm. sh- something, ha- until something major happens. Like for example, if your candidates actually manage to win all the seats and they okay, this is a wake up call. Yeah. Exactly. And um again, even winning seats as a hyper small block is remarkably tough. Mm-hmm. But even if we command 15, 20% of support it signals that in the end, it's not a vote for Muda or Said Sadiq. Yep. It is a wake-up call. Every vote is a wake-up call to remind those who sit on the thrones of power that their votes cannot be treated as a mere number or as a safe deposit. I think, I think for, for, for lack of a better word, every vote uh, means change. La. Correct. That means like every person who votes demands either to stay or to change. Correct. And it, it, it's basically a, a participation on policies and, and, and stuff like that. But then again, I'd like to ask though, is it that hard to actually contact the premiership? I mean like, okay, you got WhatsApp, you got email, you got Facebook, Messenger. I think based on what DM. he's sharing, I mean, it I almost No, I'm kidding like, like, yo, <laughs> he talks so serious. <laughs> yeah. I had to lighten up the phone yeah, 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 for a while. Yeah, 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 I know what you mean Have though. you ever tried like texting him like on I WhatsApp? Did. Or you did? I did, I tried all. <laughs> him, his offices, his office. Uh, I even like, you know... Bro, you're uh, missing out on one day. Uh, I did like the... Mm, like, just like, jump him. Instagram DM got no? No, that one no lah. You, you yeah. missed out on... Parliament, everything. I mean, I, I tried every single way. Right. Uh, every single... Because again, you have to give due respect yep, yep, of to course. the Prime Minister and his time. Yeah. But when it just kept on getting pushed down, pushed down, pushed down, pushed down, and one by one red line, one after the other, I'm like, is it worth it? Hey, you missed out on one important platform, TikTok, man. <laughs> I mean, if you have gone on TikTok, he would have responded immediately, bro. <laughs> you could have danced you could have, your message to the Prime Minister. You could have invited him to play badminton instead of, you know. <laughs> you missed out on TikTok, what can I say, you know. And you should have gone through the wife, lah, bro. You got to buy now, <laughs> you would have known. You got to want to get to the man. You want to get to Jin. You got to get through Michelle, bro. Hey, That's hey, the way. Hey. Have you not? This is the basic laws of the jungle, right? You want to get oh to God. the man, you got to go through the wife. <laughs> yeah. Hey, but, this- the wife is a brilliant lady. Exactly. I had the privilege is. of serving her uh, as when she was a deputy prime minister. Yeah. Absolute privilege. Yeah. Now, okay, the one last political question mm-hmm. before we move on away from this because, you know, yep. I think, think fair share of what yep. we've discussed today. I appreciate it for being very, very open. Yep. Yeah, truly. Um, I, I wanted to touch on this because it kind of haunts me uh, from day to day, uh, not for only for myself, but also mm. for my children who's going to probably be living longer than I am, mm. right? And they're going to have their children. Why is race-based politics still being used? Is it a tool? Is it something that is so easily used to basically swing a voter yeah. from one side to another? It's convenient and it's lazy and it is irresponsible. Why I say that is when you don't have much ideas, uh, when you want to play safe and just keep status quo, these are sentiments in which you can use to spice up the crowd and audience and get you the votes. But... Is that what Malaysia needs? No. No. To make to be to make Malaysia develop countries actually 
practicing the politics of changing hearts and minds instead of the politics of pandering. I've made my fair share of mistakes and I'm not afraid to admit that. When Bersatu was first formed, I pushed for Bersatu to be a multiracial party. Civil yep. society leaders, even Lim Kit Siang, knew that because in a meeting, I was the one who then said, Bersatu should be a multiracial leader. I remember then many of the senior leaders told me, no, yeah, if, if, if Bersatu is a multiracial party, then you will not add value to as a coalition, you are eating into our voter base, which I completely disagree with this. Why can't a multiracial party convince the Malay crowd as well? But that was then. And they said, okay, must set up uh, another Malay party so that then that party will collaborate with Pakatan Harapan before elections. And we did try it through that politics of pandering. The idea then, no, you need a Malay to convince another Malay. You need a Malay from a Malay party to convince another Malay. Did that happen? No. In reality, it got worse. Because then you drew just more and more to the right. Instead of actually working the ground to change hearts and minds of people. Will it take longer? Definitely will take longer. But it's worth it. So now, I'm not going to make the same mistake. That's why when Tun Dr. Mahdi invited me to join Perjuang to be a co-founder, I said no. Mm -hmm. Is it personal? No, I just said, I tried it before. I don't think this is the right way to move Malaysia forward. Especially for the next 20 to 30 years. If we ever dream of making Malaysia a developed country, then we need to start embracing meritocracy and a needs-based system. right? Is that needs-based system going to deprive a Malay? Hell no. I mean, if I ask you now, if there's a poor kid of an alliance, who may not get 10 straight A's, but get 8 A's, due to him yet still coming from that socioeconomic background, should we help him or her? Yes. There's a needs-based system, but flip, if that person is a Chinese or Indian kid, should we help? 110%. We're not taking away scholarships. We're not taking away positions from the poor or middle class or lower middle income Malays. If it's needs-based, that means those who are rich, no matter who you are, if you can make your own way, and yes, you perform remarkably well, but there are those who come from really poor backgrounds without access to tuition, proper schooling system, but they can still make it. It shows out of their merit from a needs-based system, they deserve to be protected regardless of race and religion. Is it safe to say that you're definitely for the merit-based system then? Definitely. Yeah, I think I think that's great to hear, especially coming from... I'll just, I mean, I'm just again going to be that straightforward saying, especially coming from from you, you know, yeah. as a Malay, as a Bumiputra. Because the truth is, you know, you mentioned you have a spot, soft spot for this. Equally, I come from a lower middle income family as well. Yeah. And I was, I couldn't get a scholarship, man. I yeah. really couldn't, you know. And I, there's no way for me. It was either Form 6 or back then it was Star College for me. There's yeah. no way I could afford a private U because I'm also from a lower income yeah. family. So I felt the brunt of it when I applied for all this one and I couldn't get it, even though I scored considerably well in my SPM. Yeah. And I've bought a full brunt of it. Yeah. And so, you know, I, I have the soft spot for this as well. So it's it's very heartening to know that you are coming from a merit-based system and in many ways, from what I've observed and yeah. hear, a need-based system as well, yeah. which is fantastic. What I personally feel is not so much of people like Jin and myself shouting for these reforms in terms of not like the NEP, for example, yeah. it's obviously super duper outdated. It shouldn't even exist, in my revamp. opinion. Hundred and ten percent should exactly, should and I stand with you on that. But what what I'm trying to say is that I don't think people like Jin and I, if we were to go out there and post on social media about us saying that hey, uh, we want to have a merit based system, I don't think the impact will be as large. And that's why I'm happy to hear that you are also very much for the merit based system, as compared to someone, as compared to you. And when mm -hmm. I say you, I mean uh, a Malay brother and sister of ours. Yeah and a Malay friend of ours, and a Bubi Putra, for yeah. you to say, hey, I am also for the merit-based system. And you're looking not just out for your own, you're looking for Malaysians. Yeah. Not Chinese Malaysian, not Indian Mal Malaysians, period. Right. Yeah. So what I feel we need is not so much of us to, you know, if this is even, if anyone's listening, you know, mm -hmm. if any of our Malay brothers and sisters who are listening, to, to hear what he just said, you know, to hear what our, our, uh, mm. our brother Sadiq here just said, and if we have enough Malay people saying that, hey, let's go towards a merit-based system, mm. our race is just as any good as any. We don't need this kind of crutches or this permanence of mentality to say that we are forever disadvantaged. We right, are just yeah. as good as any other person, the, It right? will basically level the playing field and make everybody more competitive for right. the right goal. The impact, course. what I mean, the weightage and the impact is different. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, if, if we can't even agree that we need to have equal opportunities and not equal outcomes, it is a problem. Yeah. And above and beyond that, if we just accept the notion that we are inferior forever <laughs> because of the race and the colour of our skin, that's even more depressing. Yeah. yeah. And at the same time, when I preach for a merit-need-based system, 
to me, that's even great for the Malays. I, I need to stress on that. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, it shows that we are capable, credible, we're put through the pressure cooker and in the end, we get stronger and more resilient. Mm. Yeah. Right? We can compete on our own merit. I think that makes us better and as a country, this must be established that our lives are intertwined with one another. When we succeed, we succeed together. When we fail, we fail together. The point yeah. in which you create so many differentiations to a point that someone feels that they are inferior or superior or someone feels that they are second-class citizen, it makes our country weaker. And today, it's no longer like 20, 30 years ago. Mm -hmm. yeah. Flight tickets are very cheap. Other countries are a lot more receptive. Yep. If we do not act, people may not just lose their vote. They will vote with their feet, pack up their bags and leave, leave the country. Mm. Actually, to be honest, we should start with the narrative of Chinese people are good businessmen and uh, many people I see. Everybody is a good businessman if they work yeah. hard. To be honest, Correct. I see, uh, I have some friends who are Malay businessmen and they're so successful. Yeah. I have friends who are Indian businessmen and they're so successful. It's just that I'm not sure where this whole narrative, uh, you know, uh, Chinese people are good at maths, you know, uh, Indian Actually, we doctors. know where this narrative came our, from. Yeah I, yeah, I know our parents. <laughs> but no, you know, no, no, not our parents. Ah, okay, yeah, okay. I see, I know see, where I see what you call it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I'm all I'm all for the I'm actually to be honest, I'm all for that merit system. Like, like for me, I didn't get a scholarship because you know I'm stupid. Okay, never mind. Enough of that. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I'm glad he mentioned it though, because like I said, the impact and the weightage is completely different. Coming, you and I could shout off all on the top of our lungs, and the impact and weightage is different when someone, you know, from from, you know, like like Sadik, for example, if they were to say it, it is a completely different impact and weightage. So I'm so glad to hear something like that coming from you because it's very much needed. And it brings a lot of comfort to me as well when I think about the future of my country. Yeah. When I think about the future of Malaysia because it's a country that I love and that's yeah. why we're still here, Jin and I, right? Because we do love our country. Yeah. So I know I, I do really appreciate that. Now, I want to ask one last question. Cannot. <laughs> okay, go, 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 go. Yeah, <laughs> this is a hypothetical question as well, sure. right? Uh, now, Muda is contesting on his own with PSM, right? Yeah. And... For me, I when I look at Muda and I look at the fight that you guys have and the ideas that you guys mm. have, I think it's great. I think it's fantastic, mm. by the way. And I fully support Thank it you. as well. Thank you very much. And I'm looking into what you said 10, 20 years down the road because you have a long-term plan with this. It's not just like a one-time thing where you lose the state elections and then you close your books. Correct. Or if you win big, then you start making maybe little changes here and there. It yeah. is a long-term thing. Correct. Uh, so good on, good on that as well. So what I'm trying to say is that let's put two hypothetical situations here. Okay. Say for the first one, Muda and PSM loses horribly in the state elections. Okay. You lose the deposits and everything like that. You lose everything. Yeah. Would you still be open uh, to work with the current coalition? Would you still be open to sort of say, okay, although we lost, let's see how we can still contribute to the country with whatever that we have, the resources that we have, with the leadership that we currently have, the crop of leaders that we have. Would you still be willing to work with PH and say, how can we still be of service to help bring Malaysia uh, and, and help towards uh, policy reforms? Yep. That's the first hypothetical situation, okay. If you lose, even if you lose terribly. Okay. The other That's one is, point. of course, a brighter picture, right? Okay. Flips out of the coin. You yeah. do very well. Yeah. F you know, 15, 20%. You're going to knock that figure out of the ballpark. Yeah. Let's go for a win. Yeah. And you win all the state, uh, whatever seats that you guys are competing with, 15, 20 seats. And now you have a real, real change of real say, you yeah. know, in terms of policy reforms. Would you also still then continue to say, I'm willing to still come back to the coalition? Mm. And I'm going to also put whatever I have on the table yeah. to help with the reforms. Because yeah. the answer to this, it's and quite and important. Yeah. Okay. You know what I mean, right? So to me, too hypothetical. The answer is consistent as to why Muda was formed. Right. As long as we get the reforms and policy concessions in, mm -hmm. we do not care who, how we want that to be in. So whether we lose horribly or we win big, we want to champion on the policies of diversity and multiracialism. Right. We want to ensure that reforms are put in so that institutions trump personalities and hyperpartisanship. And that will be our what ultimate personality? priority. No, instead of just focusing on the politics of personality oh, okay, okay. and the politics of hyper partisanship, ah. it's about building strong, resilient institutions. So that mm. the dream is that even if down the road, think of the most horrible Malaysia you can think of, let's say suddenly that person becomes the prime minister, mm -hmm. Malaysia will still be on the right path because our institutions are resilient. Right. The baseline is very strong, la, basically. Correct. And that's yeah. that's the definition of a developed country. Yep. Right? It's not just relying on one party or one leader but the institutions are strong enough. So, will I work with those like-minded for good policy reforms? 110%. That will be the ultimate priority. Okay. 
Hey, so you're mm. going for any of the concerts? Uh, <coughs> Coldplay, Taylor Swift. <laughs> <laughs> Are you fans of any of those or not? <laughs> Bro, of course, Coldplay, man. Yo, yeah, man. Yeah, so I mean, like, hey, you can ask my team. We tried, uh, We opened six laptops. So was like, it? Was it the same? Some situation. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, we tried everything, man. We didn't get. I uh. mean, we tried properly. We didn't get. And then suddenly, this Singapore increased from one to six days. <laughs> and you still didn't get. Yeah, bro. Oh, okay, not it's bad. one million in queue, you know. You know, I one know. million in queue waiting. And you yeah. were number? Don't know how I many mean, hundred thousand. Not existent now. <laughs> yeah. I know that my, my, my staff over here, some of them got. They got? Uh? Yeah, got. I, was I don't understand this uh, digital queue. You know? How can... I got six people on a... I see your team behind there laughing. Did any of them they get tried, none? La, they tried. All didn't get. Oh, yo. So it's either like we're just unlucky or they're not tech savvy. This we need to ask Fami la. Our internet too slow la, maybe. <laughs> we cannot compete with all the other, you know, maybe they're using different networks. Ah, yo. No, but, but Malaysia lost so much. Yeah, they yeah. did. And they, 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 I didn't even realize it until I started doing the calculations being a typical fella. Like, oh, <laughs> wow. It, we we could have basically just on, on tourism, we lost out a billion, a minimum, a minimum of a billion ringgit. Yeah. Possibly. I, I was sitting in a little talk on, you know, Twitter, yeah, Twitter space. Yeah. Right. Raul, Raul is actually one of a friend of mine yeah. uh, who is an agent who brings down a lot of artists uh, not only to Malaysia but worldwide he yeah. solicits for for dates mm. uh. yeah. and he told me that uh, there are a lot of big names that are going to come in this region and just because kind of completely sideline That's Malaysia exactly what I heard from my Singaporean counterparts mm. I mean uh, this is why I wear my policy yeah. maker hat and not my you know president of political party mm -hmm. hat we cannot just blame an elephant in the room oh this is all because of past the populist thing say definitely it's all because of past. Yep. Let's face it, past has been there and protesting consistently since 1980s. <laughs> I mean, uh, and they're not part of government. If you speak to the concert organizers, you start to realize it's a lot more nuanced. Mm -hmm. Okay, obviously, past and Union plays a role. I'm not to say that they don't. But our system now <laughs> is not attractive. Why? So three key reasons. Yep. Number one, our, our entertainment tax is ridiculously high. It's 25 percent. Mm. Yep. Singapore can review it to as low as five. Some are even, especially like Taylor Swift, where it's signed in private. They mm -hmm. went to go, they offered, I don't know what's in agreement, most likely tax exemption, maybe even cash up front, for there to be an exclusive agreement with Singapore. Mm. I mean, other, they do one day here, one day, they do like all there. And Singapore have a lot more like this. Because yeah. even during the times of COVID, they already sent their, their definition of MITI, tourism, and agencies all together, a special force, task force, to find them and set it down early, sign the agreement, exclusive Singapore. Yeah. Mm. I mean, we were quite slow on, on that front. So one is entertainment tax. Two is, you know, if you want to perform in Singapore, I mean, uh, let's say you are a concert organizer, you want to bring Taylor Swift, everything is integrated. Oh, the permit, is it? Correct. I think it's, if you want to get $30. You get no, they only online. go to one, basically Correct. one. Website, that's it. Hey, in Malaysia, you, you have to go, go to, to so different many. ministries, yeah. mi uh, different agencies, the police, Everything. Yep. So we have Puspal, but even then you have to get permission of all the rest. Yep. And back then, uh, it's manual, you know. Not even online. Yeah. So that's another very big issue. Issue number two. Issue number three. When you come to Malaysia as well, there is a lack of certainty in doing business. Why? Previously, sign already. You are a concert promoter. You have to take the risk. Let's say you want to bring Beyonce $5 million dollars. You have to invest first. Yep. But you know in the end, as long as the concert happens, confirms a lot, yep. you'll make mm. money. Suddenly, one, two weeks before, becomes a national issue. It Politicians scared. Yeah. And Nola cannot do. Ugh. You know who loses money? You. Yeah. yeah. I mean, and after that, everyone will be scared. They'll skip Malaysia. Yeah. So there's a problem of everyone will be scared, meaning the, the the promoters lah. Correct. Because promoters. as a as a business owner, there might be a risk to bring a might more. Might be. It's a massive risk. A massive okay, risk. I'm just gonna be. I'm trying to be politi oh, politically politically okay, okay, correct. Okay. Might be a risk because yeah. if you bring such a famous person, yeah. you mm -hmm. know, there might be there there yeah. there are more. There's a better likelihood of the people who do not know who they are to know yeah. who they are yeah. lah. Yeah, you know, yeah. you bring a small band, they'll be oh, okay, yeah. okay, approve, approve, yeah. approve. But but the thing is, people I see the, the reason I'm frustrated. I think obviously I speak quite openly about this. Oh my God, Sadiq is supporting Coldplay, LGBTQI. I mean, seriously, I mean, if you go and listen to Coldplay suddenly, oh, you become LGBTQI. I mean, that's bizarre. La. You go there to <laughs> listen to Coldplay. Whatever he wants, his belief, that's him. La, mm -hmm. Right? But look at the economic aspect of it. Yeah. And that's called entertainment tourism. Right? I mean, you know, let's say Coldplay, six days in Singapore. 300,000 300, tickets. 300, tickets. That's ridiculous. You go there, you fly there. You stay in the hotel. Stay in the hotel. Eat their food. Yeah. Shopping. Yeah. Don't forget. Shopping. And you overstay a few nights there. That's a lot of money. And mind you, that means the majority of those from Southeast Asia will fly to Singapore. Yeah. 
I mean, convert their currency into Singapore currency. And all of a sudden, SGD is more in demand because before you fly to a country, exactly. you have to Correct. change SGD. Yes. So, I mean, the multiplier is so much more. If you don't like Coldplay, you don't want to watch, don't go. But the point of the matter is don't deprive others the right to go. Right? And um, fine, your state may not want to hear. It's okay. Malaysia, to me, the reason I love Malaysia is in the diversity of Malaysia. You don't want to host in Kelantan and Terengganu, you want to bring your own? Sure, we mm. will respect that. I will not force you to. But don't disallow KL or Selangor or Sarawak and Sabah, the future entertainment hubs, to do so. Even in the US, for example, they have Bible Belt states and they have the more liberal states, right? But in the end, due to the basket of choices, everyone benefits, right? And that's the beauty of Malaysia. I don't want to restrict even... That's why I, I always believe in holding the center. Yeah. We can't force our ideals also on other state governments when they say no. Right? But at the same time, they are fundamental ideals which we support as a country. And while we may be different, but when we come together, we are solid. Yep. I think that's our strength. We should play on that instead of treating that as a weakness. Yeah. Uh, no, we're going to have some fun. In, 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 no, I, right? I hope they'll bring all the concerts to East Malaysia because they know yeah. how to party. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah serious, so, dude. So the, the only other, other problem, so I completely agree with you, but the only other problem is this. It's about capacity. Right. So the reason why concert organizers come here because Stadium Bukit Jalil can host 80,000. At yeah. times, you stretch it 85, 90,000. Yep. Right? So even though currency exchange Singapore is high, Singapore 50,000, we get 80,000, that already balances it, uh, balances it out. But in Sarawak or Sabah, what's the biggest stadium? Can they host even 50,000? So that's why to me, I mean, this may be controversial, but I'll just put it in a very simple way. I believe in importing multiracial moderate Malaysia from Sabah, Sarawak and exporting proper development and economic opportunities from here to Sabah and Sarawak. So that makes our country a great place. I There's think that's a, a great barter system, yeah. right? There. I, I, yeah, that's good. Yeah, yeah I mean, <laughs> we can learn from one another, but more importantly, utilize each other's strength. So if really, I mean, we can't do it here. I mean, back then, again, more controversially, if some states really don't want to do medical cannabis and ketom, okay, respect that, but don't disallow Sabah and Sarawak. From, from the opportunity to expand. If some cannot accept sin industries, then this allow, don't disallow other states who could because in the end, they have that data-driven policy which shows that if you just suppress it, the illegal trade or black market gets worse. Mm -hmm. so I always believe in data-driven decision and the experimenting of the diversity of Malaysia. Yeah. Right? You can't, it's okay. We're not going to force you. But don't disallow other states from doing it. Mm. East Malaysia is awesome. It I is. love that place. It is. I, I went there. I went there before, and I'm like, "Wow, these people here know how to really like." Yeah. Actually, to be honest, I went there. I felt, I felt, I felt the true Malaysia. Yeah. Oh, really, yeah. I went to a kopitiam, right? There's Malay, Indian, oh. Chinese, all yep. eating same thing. And then I also questioned, you know, oh, there's the there's a guy selling wonton meat, yeah. and there's uh, non halal food here. Then they looked at me. It's okay over yeah. here. We family. Yeah, bro. The kopitiam there, bro. One nasi lemak. Exactly. They want jiok fat. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> no, and I'm like, common. yeah, yeah. And I, it's common. great. It's like a, I was a little bit sh like uh, taken aback. Like, oh, it's it's I, it's like that. How come it's not like that in KL? And yeah, mm. that's why we 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 wish for that over here. But uh, yep. ah, okay. Now moving away from politics, we have a mm. bit of speed round questions because you see, uh, speed up questions. Uh, speed round questions. Oh, okay. Ah, okay. You have to get it right. If you don't get it right, you. you wow, well, this one got it's not objective yes, question There is subjective. a punishment, uh, bro. Oh, there's no, there's no objective question because you're so smart. <laughs> <laughs> You are expected to get it correct. <laughs> yeah. Expected lah. <laughs> expected lah. Yeah. So yeah, for every answer you get wrong, you take one uh, mouthful. Uh, mouthful of uh, <clears throat> uh, spicy uh, noodles. <laughs> can you what? eat spicy? Uh? Bro, I mean, I'm sure you can. Oh, you're the worst. Uh. Oh, it's okay. We didn't make it that spicy. Yeah, uh. it's okay lah. It's not that spicy lah. I think it's not that spicy. Can we can we bring in the bowl first? And we are going to entice I'm and sort of tempt him no, a little bit. I here. am genuinely scared. Well, nah, 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 nah. Don't worry, don't worry. We didn't. Okay, to 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 make you feel better, we didn't cook it ourselves. Ah, uh, it, it's fast food. Okay. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know how that makes it better, but sure. Sorry, you may or may not go for your next interview. <laughs> yeah. It, yes, it is cooked. It's cold. It's cold. Oh, it's cold. It's cold. Okay, it's cold. Okay, right, okay, right, right. Okay, okay, okay. It looks like it's in its uh, shape. So this is uh, just basically spicy noodles. Now Jin is gonna ask the question. We're gonna ask one by one, lah. Yeah, one by one, lah. Yeah. yeah, it does look scary, but and it's okay. I'm Don't worry. I'm hungry, lah, bro. Because it's not. Yeah, I knew you had lunch, but I mean McDonald's <laughs> not enough, lah, can. Yeah, so it's just. I'm gonna put, put it here first, guys. I'm just gonna put it here. Bro, first. the smell alone, I can. <laughs> yeah. Smell alone. No, 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 no. I just, you know, uh, uh, you know, politicians they always carry themselves very well. You know, yeah, they we stand are, by water for you. They're always very politically correct. Exactly. Every answer is a correct answer, but is it a correct answer? Ah. In the eyes of the public, and uh -huh. in, the, in this case, the people representing the public is Brandon and myself, lah. <laughs> That's right. And uh, um, a I'm few people so, behind the camera. This sounds so biased. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Hundred ten percent biased. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, yeah. Okay, so <coughs> are you are you ready for this, Brandon? <laughs> I'm so out, oh, dude. I've asked this question to public before, and a lot of them actually got it right. So. Wait, so you know, wait, 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 wait. We we got sound effect also. Oh, we, sound effect. Go yeah, for we, it. we got a composer. I'm not wearing it, so I couldn't hear it. 
I'll ask the first question. Go for it, Jim. Okay, Sadiq. If an electric train goes from north to south, what in the world? Where does the smoke go? Mm. When the electric train goes north from north, north to south, to south, where does the smoke go? Think hard. Think hard. Eh, there. The air. The air. Oh. All right, let's oh. go for it. One mouthful. Wait, wait, oh. wait, 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 wait. Repeat the question, Jin. Then we'll know why. Electric trains don't have smoke. <laughs> let's go. <laughs> do you want me I to swap can you I or you want to do it yourself? So, so. Okay, no, no, no. We, we, we accumulate all of the all we of accumulate the is it? Yeah, yeah, we okay, accumulate okay. after he'll take one right, bite. Okay, 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 okay. Maybe he cannot answer, right? No, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, 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 why is okay, so stupid okay. one? <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> okay, okay. We have another question. Yeah. Okay, okay, have to yeah, focus, have to focus. Alright, Sadek, you're ready. You cannot be disarmed. Alright, now now we switch to Bahasa Malaysia. Okay, okay. Ikan apa yang terbesar di dunia? Ikan apa yang terbesar di dunia? Ini mesti lauk hambaan. Mm. Ikan apa yang... Ikan paus? Bukan. Salah. Jawapannya, Ikan Power Centre. What the f***? <laughs> that, one, that one is not me. <laughs> eh, not, eh, the train eh, one can accept lah, right? <laughs> right? I, I missed up the the electric part. Kau ikan one of... Kau pun tak... You also know how to say, kan? Memang lauk hamba, kan? So, memang lauk hamba. Ikan Power Centre. That's okay. So, aku lauk hamba ni tak... Okay, that's zero out of two for now. Okay. Zero out of two for now. It's okay. You can save yourself for the next question. <laughs> you might get this right. You might. Or you might get it wrong. You might. Okay, Sadiq. What happens when uh, you... <laughs> sorry. I just saw the answer. <laughs> Okay, that means the lauk hamba. Okay, okay, okay. Hey, you, why did you give it away? It's a serious question, Brandon. <laughs> Who came up with these questions? Okay, stop oh laughing. Stop laughing. It's serious. Okay? okay, go for it. Sadiq. What happens when you sneeze and fart at the same time? <laughs> sneeze and, and fart. fart. I'm gonna give you a is hint. Is this a la. dirty question? No, 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 no. no, 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 no. no. Like, yes, it's quite, it's quite, uh, it's quite straightforward. Nah, yeah. I just want to give you a hint. Sneeze. I am and fart at, at the, the same, same time. time. Yeah, time is running out. I'm gonna give you three seconds, buddy. Yeah, three seconds. Smelly lah. Smelly lah. Smelly lah. Salah. Pula, betul lah. Your body answer? takes a screenshot. <laughs> I tried to give it a hint, man. I was literally holding up my even phone. Close. That's not I even close. <laughs> hey, hey, you think everyone uses iPhone? Ah? <laughs> uh, what if it's not I iPhone? <laughs> hey, Android, iPhone sama juga. And, and, yeah. If you hold the power button and the volume button, phone. top and bottom, you take a screenshot. Oh, man. That's zero out of three, buddy. Ah, hey, man. Try, try. Uh, your phone, your phone. <laughs> 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 okay, what, what's, what's the what's the what's the next question? Okay. Hey, what is this like? I kind of want to veer away from question number four and go to question number five. Oh yes, yeah, sure, sure, sure. Last okay. one, last one. What is the oldest animal in the world? God, wait, wait, wait. Is this a smart answer or like a random hmm. oldest? Animal? What is the oldest animal in the world? I'm gonna have to press you for Oil. an answer. Oil. Yeah. And so oil is an animal. It decomposed and then the end becomes <laughs> oil. I'm scared because y- your your answer will be all this weird answer. <laughs> so I think oil lah. It's de- <sighs> fossils. Oh, okay, I'll, I'll give you. I'll give you some. Millions of years ago, compressed becomes oil. Fair enough. There oil. is some intelligence in that answer. But I like yeah. I like how how <laughs> nonsensical the answer is. Yes. I give you A for effort. <laughs> I give you A for effort. I give you A for effort. Right. Out of ten, I give you a solid five. But the answer is a zebra. No, it's not. It is. Oh. Because. The zebra is still in black and white. And that's about time. <laughs> Thank All you the so time much we have for being today. here. This is impossible. Okay, okay, okay. All right, bro. Okay, but you have to help me take as well. Uh. Yeah. yeah. What, what, what? Wait, you know what? Let's be fair, right? Let's be fair. Wait, wait. You're not sick or anything, right? Yeah, you're no, not, right? No, you, you, you deserve like three mouthfuls. Jin and I will take one. What? Let's, Why I, am I dragged into... Okay, la, we were being very, we were being very unbiased. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's no way we would have gotten that, la, okay? Okay, it's okay. Okay, here we go. We, we actually, the whole purpose is uh, we understand that you could not take spicy food. So we wanted to help uh, kind of bring up your threshold of tolerance of spicy food. This is oh training. Yeah. Is it really spicy? It's nice, right? Initially, it's okay. And then after that, the aftertaste, wow. Okay, oh. okay, enough. That's enough, that's enough. No, no, okay. no, 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 no. One more, one more. Oh, one, more, on, one more, one more. Okay, okay, we okay. We've got to honour the, you know, honour the agreement here. Yeah? One more, one oh, more wow. mouth. <laughs> <laughs> Last one and you're done, buddy. Uh, stand by water, bro. <laughs> I tell you, after this time, it's not going to invite me for his Hari Raya open house. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he was so nice to text me. He's like, hey, I'm just having a Hari Raya open house. No, no, I'll text. <laughs> and then everyone else will be having all my cookies, drinks, yeah. and then you will be the only one having <laughs> <laughs> You'll probably put me outside. Okay, you you stay here for a while. Yeah, and opens the blinds. Yeah, we're having fun inside. We're having fun outside. Okay. okay, that's it, everybody. Let's give a big round of applause for Sadiq. Yeah, good job, buddy. Here you go, here you go. I'm sorry, we asked your team, and then your team said that you can take spicy food. 
Yeah. They know I cannot take spicy food. Oh, is it? Oh. I'm so sorry. No, uh, yeah, you know, in the heat of the moment when you're debating or you're fighting about policies, you know, in the heat of the moment and things get spicy, yeah, this is actually practice, lah. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> I'm so sorry, man. Don't hate me for this. <laughs> what, what, what oh, what noodles? Actually, it's quite nice. Uh, it's quite nice, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll tell you after, lah. We'll tell you after. We'll tell you after, lah. Uh, uh, I think, if I'm not mistaken, is it the, che- the cheesy brapi one? Uh? Oh, you need to put the cheese inside. The oh, cheese so is wrapy, lah. Ah, yes, 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 yes. Ah, <laughs> so sorry. I, 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 really thank you for uh, coming on the show, mm. and uh, he's continuing to drink. Oh, he just, he just gulped down that bottle of <laughs> you water. You want some more? No? <laughs> <laughs> How are you uh, feeling? Okay. No, I'm okay. You're right. Okay, yeah. Oh, his face is no very fire. right now. <laughs> no I can see I some, understand uh, you're shy. You're blushing. <laughs> Some lip, some lip sweat swarming. <laughs> uh. But I do hope uh, wherever you're heading uh, yeah. with whatever decisions you make with Muda or your political career, it's, it's for the best interest of Thank the country you. and also, mm. I know, with, for whatever you're fighting for as well. Uh, I think for me, I, I, I can't speak on behalf of everyone. I, I can't speak on behalf of the people who are very well versed in the politics because for me, it's, I'm always on the surface kind of guy. But there, when there are certain things that I kind of like support, yeah. I will be very vocal about it. And yeah. then sometimes, you know, we've we've had chats before. Some of yeah. the things and reforms that you talked about, I yeah. kind of feel like, yeah, I know we kind of need that change. Yeah. Particularly education, merit based system, and also mm. equality for yeah. everybody over here. But uh, I, I mean, w- that goes without saying. Obviously, you had Brandon on the show ask you a whole lot of difficult questions. So, how? Okay, Brandon, okay. Yeah, <laughs> yeah boleh, boleh, boleh. Uh, you want him on the next uh, show? Uh, or not? Ask him when, when, when he wants to be tanding. Oh, uh, yeah. Hey, actually, he did say that, you know. Uh, Muna want to hire him. <laughs> yeah, he will hope one day I, he wants to run for his country. I will, I'll have got to ask my wife first. It's very important. <laughs> <laughs> That's why he said everything the key is with the wife. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Wife first. So, your wife will basically go and contest us before you. La. <laughs> <laughs> she go and test the waters. Okay, not bad. It's quite warm over here. Go, darling. <laughs> <laughs> but before we go, I mean, is there anything you want to kind of like, you know, tell the viewers, listeners, mm. and, you know, voters? Yeah. I mean, um, to all Malaysians out there, regardless of the party which you support, regardless of your race, religion, background, profession, I hope in the end we always put our country first and know that this country is blessed because of our diversity. That in the end, we cannot afford to allow one race or one religion to go to the docks or only one to succeed because the fact of the matter is our lives are largely intertwined with one another our success story is carved by our actions yesterday today and of tomorrow and it's by all of us so what makes us great is our diversity and so let's celebrate it and let's keep on turbocharging this wonderful land forward Wow, so that sounds like a Mr. Universe answer if there was a competition. Oh, Mr. Universe. Universe. Mr. Universe. I just have to be. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> yeah. That's awesome. All right, man. Guys, thank you so much uh, for tuning in on the show today. And of course, if you have any questions, you would like to reach out to Mr. Said Sadi himself. Of course, uh, you got Instagram, you got TikTok, Twitter, uh, and his number is 01. Kidding, kidding, kidding. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's quite bahia. Thank you so much for tuning in on the show. Remember, you can stream us on Spotify, on Apple Podcasts. 1.5 million people actually listen to this podcast. I'm very proud to say that. Tell you what, I have to say it in front of Sayyid. Huh? <laughs> but uh, thank you all for the conversations. We'll thank speak you. to you guys next time. Thank you very much.